Hey, what's up guys? Chris here with Cryo Effects. Welcome to the Cryo Effects YouTube channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about how long can a CO2 tank last? CO2 tank sizes, CO2 cylinder sizes. We got a chart for you on this video as well that's gonna cover all of that. But before we get started, if you like our channel, if you like our videos, of course, hit that subscribe button and we welcome you. So let's get into this. You have a question and your question is, how long can my CO2 tank last? That's a great question, but you have to actually go in and dig a little bit deeper because what size CO2 tank are you talking about? Now, there's many different sizes of CO2 tanks. As you can see here, I'm surrounded by them. So what we're gonna do on this video is we're gonna cover the different sizes of tanks. We're gonna cover how long those tanks last and how much CO2 those tanks will put out. Liquid and estimated gas. However, what we're gonna be doing is letting you know what these numbers are, but this is when the tank is completely open. When you take the valve and you turn it all the way open. There's many factors that go into these tanks. The different sizes are one factor. The other factor is the actual tank itself, the valve on the tank. How big is that orifice or opening in the valve? Not the opening that you see that may be on the tank, but actually inside the valve where you can't see. That's called the orifice. Those are factors that limit the flow of gas, that limit the flow of liquid coming out of these tanks, and therefore, subsequently, that opening in itself, and of course, the valve, how open the valve is, are also going to dictate how long the CO2 tank lasts. These are things that you need to know because I wish I could just give you a straight answer, but with all these other factors that go into it, it's very difficult to give one solid answer. And of course, all tanks are built just a little bit differently. So this video, like I said, we're gonna cover the basics, but I'm also gonna give you some more information that makes a great discussion topic, not only for us, but for you, but more importantly, gives you the knowledge that you need to know to make an informed decision about what tanks you may need for whatever you're gonna be using them for. You might be using them for your aquarium. You might be using them for pool. You might be using them for special effects. You might be using them for horticulture. There's so many things that CO2 is used for. These are things that we're not gonna talk about in this video. That's an entirely different video, as I like to say, because it is. But we're gonna be talking about the tanks themselves. And of course, how long they last. So CO2 tank setups, I got our tank set up right here. I'm gonna cover these tanks. First and foremost, a tank similar to this would be a 10 pound tank, just to give you a preface of the set. A tank down here, this is an aluminum 50 pound cylinder that you could barely see. This is a steel 50 pound cylinder. This one is actually on a crate. This is a siphon tube 35 pound CO2 cylinder. This back here, that's a NOS tank. That's not a CO2 tank, but I thought it looked cool in the set, so why not leave it? Maybe it can go in your car. Let me know in the comments. <laughs> This one, this is a 100 pound CO2 tank. These are large. This one over here, to my left, your right, that is actually a 135 pound CO2 cylinder. These are all high pressure tanks. This one is a low pressure tank. This is a 180 liter Dewar tank or what's called a bulk tank. It's actually a bulk tank, a bulk CO2 tank. The pressure on that is a little bit different. I'm gonna start with this one, and then I'm gonna talk about these because I'm gonna pop a chart of the screen and actually go over some different sizes, some numbers, some basic measurements, and some weights. You wanna know what the weight of a CO2 tank is? That's all right here. The chart I'm putting up because it'll make it so much easier for you to visually see what I'm talking about because maybe you're sick of seeing my face, right? <laughs> so this tank, this won't be on our chart, but this is a 180 liter doer. This is equivalent to about eight or nine 50 pound tanks. This one resides at about 300, 350 PSI normally. This tank will last 10 to 15 minutes depending on the output. Now, that is a liquid output for this specific tank. If you're doing gas, it will last a lot longer. You're probably gonna get anywhere from 30 minutes to multiple hours, again, this deter is determined by the valve, how open the valve is, and of course, the orifice and the output 
that the fitting has on the cylinder itself. So the numbers here and why we're gonna be giving you the numbers on liquid, because the way a tank works is this. If using this tank, for instance, if this tank was full of CO2, you have about two thirds of it actually liquid. The rest of it is gas. The hotter it gets, the less liquid, the more gas, the higher the pressure. The colder it gets, the more liquid, the less gas, and the lower the pressure. So this tank right here actually has a glass interior and it's vacuum jacketed between the glass interior that holds the liquid or whatever other material holds the liquid and the outer shell. And that vacuum jacketed or negative pressure is actually acting as a insulation. Therefore, these internally sit at a much colder temperature. To build the pressure on them, you have something that comes out the bottom inside and wraps around the inside outer edge of this tank with a valve that comes out and back in. That builds the pressure itself. These tanks don't have that. Whatever the outside temperature is, is going to affect these tanks. That's why I have to say this because you need to understand how these tanks operate and how they function to be able to understand the concept of how much CO2 you're gonna be getting out of them. So the more you understand, the better off that you'll be in preparing and planning what you need to plan and prepare for with the CO2 tanks. This particular tank is different, so that's why we're getting this out of the way first, okay? Yes, pressure does matter, yes, the heat outside matters, but at the same time, we're gonna be discussing these tanks because these are most prevalent and probably why you're watching this video. So let's jump into that now. So with this said, when you have your liquid that sits at the bottom of the tank, that liquid converts to a gas. If you're getting a liquid output, your pressure is gonna be the same, but your usage time is gonna be different than if you had gas. Reason being, Again, using this tank as an example. For liquid draw, you have a siphon tube that goes down to the bottom of the tank, like a straw in a soda cup. The pressure is gonna push that liquid out first. Then when all the liquid's gone, what you have left is the gas that also is inside the tank. So you're gonna have gas come out after the liquid. Doesn't mean the tank's empty, but for special effects purposes, yes, the tank is empty because there's no more liquid. However, if you're using regular CO2 tanks, non-siphon tanks, what happens is that liquid that sits at the bottom of the tank converts to a gas as the pressure is let off, as you use the gas. More liquid converts to more gas. That ends up converting over inside the tank. You don't see it. So what happens is you actually get the full use of the tank when you're using it for gas because you're using gas. Whereas compared to special effects, when the liquid's gone, yes, the tank is empty, but technically the tank is not empty. So you probably searched for a couple of things online to find this video, such as CO2 tank setup, CO2 tank sizes welding, CO2 tank sideways. Uh, no CO2 tanks are sideways here. However, you can put them sideways. See? So... That's not what we're covering here. We're covering CO2 cylinder size chart and CO2 tank sizes. So without further ado, let's pop this chart online on this video so that you can see what I'm talking about and we're gonna cover everything in that CO2 cylinder size chart now. So with looking at the left side of it, you have 2.5 pound CO2 tank, 14 inches high by 4.26 inches wide. I'm not going to cover all of these. I'll let you do the rest. I'm just doing this for the first. This tank typically lasts about 0.05 seconds. That's with liquid CO2. For gas, again, this is all relevant on how much you're using, how open the valve is. Liquid, we know the valve's all the way open because that's typically how people use these tanks, as will be the same with all the tanks. But for gas, these tanks can last quite a bit longer. So for liquid consumption and liquid output with the valve all the way open, 0.05 seconds. Once all that liquid's gone, you only have a series of time left of that tank before it's completely depleted. And you're talking maybe one minute or two minutes or three minutes, again, depending on the valve. The aluminum tanks, 
Five pounds is what they weigh empty, of course. The 2.5 pounds added to five, you get 7.5 pounds full. That's what the full aluminum tank weighs. Steel, a little bit different. And let me preface this, guys, and say that these tanks on this chart, this is general information. It's not extremely specific. So aluminum tanks are made to spec. Some may weigh a little bit more than others. Steel, it's, it's like rolling the dice. You got steel tanks, I've seen all different sizes. I mean, I don't have it here, but I have a couple hundred pounds that are sitting right off set here, and they're all different sizes. The tar weights are different, which when you put the gas in it, they're all gonna weigh different. So this chart is just meant to look over it and get a general idea. And of course, I have the chart at the link in the description below that you can see that because we wanna make sure that you have what you need. Moving on to the five pound tank. 10 seconds, you have the weight of the aluminum, the weight of the steel, then you double it. Your 10 pound tank is gonna last about 20 seconds. That's with liquid output valve all the way open. Your 15 pound tank lasts for about 30 seconds. Your 20 pound tank is gonna last for about 40 seconds. 20 pound is very common with special effects, CO2 special effects and uh, CO2 uh, stage effects. These 20 pound, 35 pound, 50, 75, 100 is what they normally use on stage effects. So you stage effects guys, pay attention. You got your 35 pound, that's about a minute. Now, if you notice here, at least up to this point, 2.5, 5, 10, 15, and 20, you take the weight of the tank or the size of the tank, a 20 pound tank, 20 pounds, 20 times two, 40, 40 seconds. Now you do the same thing with 10. 10 times two, 20. A 10 pound tank times two, 20 seconds. So typically you're getting about two seconds for every pound of CO2. Where this is different is after where we're at right now. Your 35 pound, your 50, your 75 and 100. Because generally for some reason, the more CO2 that's in the tank, the, uh, you're gonna get a little bit more. The smaller tanks, it stays pretty, pretty, uh, pretty much the same. Again, don't quote me, every situation is different. If you're in Vegas, it's a lot hotter, okay? A tank that's sitting in 70 degree weather compared to a tank that's sitting in 35 degree weather, 35 degree weather, you're gonna get a lot more CO2 out of it, at least with the liquid draw, than you are out of a tank that's gonna be sitting in 70 or 80 or 90 degree weather. It's all relevant because of the pressure. Earlier in the video, remember what I said? I think you do. So jumping right back into this. 35 pound, about a minute. 50 pound, 1.25 minutes. 75 pound, two minutes, 15 seconds. And of course, 100 pound, two minutes, 45 seconds. What I could do is technically say 100 pound plus 35 pound to equal this 35, 135 pound. Just to be safe, I can go 100 pound plus 35 pound. That's about three minutes and 45 seconds. Even though it's not on the chart, I know that I have at least that. And that's what I would know for this tank, okay? These are high pressure tanks. You can't take that same type of calculation and go for one of these doers or a larger tank. Now, where this gets creative is if I take two 50 pound tanks and I put them together, generally, yes, I have about two minutes and 50 seconds, generally. You don't wanna quote that, and the reason being is this. Again, how much CO2 is flowing in to the hose? Is the hose constricting it? Is the is the fitting on the, uh, the valve on the tank constricting it? Is one of your other fittings constricting it? Is the pressure, where's the pressure at? Where's the temperature at? I'm saying this like this for a reason. The reason being is so many things affect this, you don't wanna solely rely on this chart you don't solely want to rely on these numbers you want to use this as a starting point it's better to have more than not enough so with that said chart in the description below i've talked enough on this video i think you've gotten enough information out of this if you want to be safe at least look at these numbers for your co2 tank because this is the liquid output you have to have liquid first before you have gas so if you base your numbers off of this and you're using gas, you're gonna have a lot more than this, okay? I wouldn't say double. I wouldn't even say one and a half more. You're gonna get more gas because this is all liquid output. Like I said, I'm just reframing this. 
But as long as you plan according to this and you have a gas output requirement, you're gonna be in the safe zone and you're gonna be able to calculate how much CO2 you need. Without further ado, and without anything else said, because I've talked too much already, I'm kidding, but slightly not. Do me a favor, if you like this video, if you like the content here, hit that subscribe button below, likes, notification bells. It does the algorithm good justice and promotes this video for those people who are probably searching long and hard and don't know where to find this information. This information is given for you because you like to watch it and these are questions that we see online all the time. I'm Chris, this is Cryo Effects, and this is how long can a CO2 tank last? <laughs> I'm saying do, so I'm not out of here yet. How long can a CO2 tank last? I provided CO2 tank sizes. I've given you a CO2 cylinder size chart. If you're welding, CO2 tank sizes for welding and of course, your CO2 tank setup, not on this video, and we did show you CO2 tank sideways. You can put these sideways, okay, I'll talk about it. You can't put these sideways, you just gotta make sure that if you're using gas, they have to be a little bit propped up, and if you're using liquid, they have to be a little bit propped up as well, if you want liquid or you want gas. Reason being is that liquid needs to fall to the bottom of the tank. Just do it very carefully, we are not liable for that. I'm Chris, this is Cryo Effects, and until next video, peace.